discussions about a variety of health topics and issues. And I think it's important to uh, have community advocates involved in that discussion as well. And the statistics, as we've discovered throughout the day, show that COVID-19 has affected our Black communities deeply. Higher rates of infection and the unfortunate passing of many have occurred in our communities versus other groups. Our ways of life, including employment, schooling, and business are forever impacted. We've gathered a panel of community advocates to discuss their thoughts and feelings about fighting COVID-19 in the Black community. We have Reverend DeGraff, who's an active member of the 100 Black Men of New York, past vice president, and a member of the founding chapter of the International Organization. The 100 Black Men of New York is a philanthropic organization dedicated to educating and empowering African-American youth. Reverend DeGraff and his 100 Black Men brethren founded the Eagle Academy Schools for Young Boys throughout New York City. In addition, he's held the position of Chief of Protocol in the National Action Network. And today, Reverend DeGraff serves as the pioneering chair of the School Construction Diversity Council that sets the standard across the state of New York for minority and women-owned business participation. Reverend DeGraff is a sought after speaker and contributor to Fox News. And Reverend DeGraff will moderate and introduce the additional participants in this panel. Thank you so very much for joining us today, all of the participants. And we look forward to a very strong and dynamic discussion about fighting COVID-19 in the black community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. And, and we appreciate that generous introduction. I, I'd like to update it. Uh, I'm the chair of the Friends of Harlem Definitely. Hospital. But the most important thing that I'm doing right now is I'm the New York clergy leader for Choose Healthy Life. And uh, the thing that's exciting about that is that one of the shortcomings of many communities is we don't do succession planning. But in the black community in New York, we've got dynamic leaders who have emerged to take the reins of leadership. And they're more than activists. They're, they're achievers and doers. And so we have two of the most dynamic voices in the city of New York who have joined us here today. Uh, my brother, uh, I call him L.A., Lawrence Aker, has been knocking down walls and, and surprising and raising expectations as the pastor of Cornerstone Baptist Church in Brooklyn. He originally hailed from California. Uh, they migrated to Texas, and then he went to the Big HU, uh, Howard University, and the, during that time he found the life challenge and his illness, and he, during an illness he answered the call to ministry, and he's never looked back. He's gone to Drew University in Yale. He's an accomplished theologian, a dynamic preacher, pastor, and we're delighted that he represents one of the ten churches that are part of the Choose Healthy Life Network uh, in New York. Brother Pastor, glad to see you. G glad you're with us this afternoon. Good afternoon, Dr. DeGraff, and honored to be with you this, today. And uh, Lamoria Alawalde L is uh, some kind of special. She's a daughter of Harlem. She's a mother. She's a beautiful young grandmother, uh, and she's been uh, she's in her second life already. She was a, a mover and shaker in the recording industry and switched over to human services. She's worked her way up the, the ladder at the United Way, which is the gold standard for human services, where she's now a vice president. And under her leadership, uh, New York, uh, the black community was targeted because we've often been behind when it comes to participating in the census. And she led the United Way's participation and engagement and outreach to getting the black community on board. So to the beautiful grandmother, uh, welcome. Thank you very much, Reverend DeGraff. And, 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 and both of our, our panelists today are family people. They are dedicated people. And so the, the COVID crisis is not some esoteric issue that's a policy issue. It's a real life bread and butter, life and death issue in their community. So I want to uh, turn to you, Lamorio, first to say, what is this Choose Healthy Life uh, initiative all about that, that we are all a part of? Uh, could you tell our listeners and viewers what, what Choose Healthy Life is? Sure. Choose Healthy Life is an initiative that is a partnership between Deborah Fraser Associates, a public health consulting firm, as well as Quest Diagnostics. Um, and we're partnering with 50 churches across 
five markets, New York City, New Jersey, Atlanta, Detroit, and Washington, DC, to partner with some of the most trusted institutions in the Black community, the Black church and faith-based institutions, to provide education awareness, increase testing capacity, uh, increase vaccine confidence and vaccine uh, availability within the Black community, but also build a workforce of Black church public health navigators who are similar to community health workers within the community and have the, the touch points. Uh, a, they're employed by the churches through this initiative, uh, but they have the touch points in the community to not just reach the, the parishioners and the congregants within the church, but also community members and connect them to resources that can help uh, save lives, right? And so we have a really strong emphasis on COVID-19 right now, but Choose Healthy Life is really focused on health disparities that impact the Black community at a significant scale. We are also uh, really looking to expand uh, beyond the five communities that we're in, but certainly the work is kicked off in these five communities and there's still a lot more to do. Our national uh, co-chairs are the Reverend Calvin Butts and Reverend Al Sharpton. We're uh, 10 churches in each city. Each city has a clergy leader. You might know some of their names, Reverend David Jefferson out of Newark and Reverend Senator Raphael Warnock in Atlanta. It's my privilege to serve in New York, uh, but I lead an all-star team, and Lawrence Aker is, is one of the brightest of those stars. Uh, Reverend Aker, uh, you are in a historic church over 100 years old. You come up this year on your 18th anniversary. How has the COVID uh, epidemic hit your congregation? Well, like many churches, we've been adversely impacted. Um, we've lost members. We've done virtual funerals and we've done in-person funerals, but uh, thank God for the vaccination. We had a lot of members come out when we acted as a host site. And so prayerfully things will start to level out, but like many churches, we've been impacted financially through membership and uh, it's been a difficult season. Uh, Lamoria, I'm gonna come back to Reverend Anchors, but. Uh, right now, a lot of people in our communities are searching for hope. Uh, it, it, it's a difficult time. We've gone through months of uncertainty. Uh, so what I want to ask you, as, as not only as an executive, but as a mother and a grandmother, what did you learn from the census outreach when, when you pulled the numbers up out of the toilet uh, to get full participation in our community in, in the last census? Uh, we're, we, because of our experience in America, We've been suspicious of government. We're suspicious of authority, if you will, because things that have been labeled uh, for our benefit have turned out to be used against us. So there's a lot of history here. How did you, what did you learn in the census that you've been able to apply to Choose Healthy Life? A couple of things. One is that we have to have trusted messengers that carry the message. While there are messages that are sent far and wide through uh, you know, political uh, folks, through organizations, through government. One thing we know is that community listens to community. And generally, if you have someone that you trust, that you know, that looks like you, that is delivering the message in the language that you speak, then it is more likely to penetrate. This is one of the reasons we went to the clergy uh, initially for Choose Healthy Life, because we know that the clergy are trusted messengers in our community. But the other thing we did was took it a step further and engaged community health workers, knowing that these people know where people are accessing services. Um, not only are we, during the, uh, during the census, not only were we uh, trying to get people educated, but the day after the census went live, the, the world started to shut down and New York City emerged as the epicenter of uh, the pandemic. And so within that, we knew people were accessing additional resources. And so what we tried to do is meet people where they were. If it was the food pantry line, if it was, you know, at the supermarket, if it was, if it was someplace else, we tried to go to those community hubs where we knew we could find people because there was a digital divide that still existed. Um, and so... Uh, you know, part of what we tried to do through Choose Healthy Life is continue to engage with community-based organizations, community-based resources where people access much needed services. Some of them come in the way of schools, uh, still food pantries are very important. Certainly the churches provide a plethora of resources that people access 
in addition to um, to Sunday services. Uh, and so what we tried to do is really couple uh, our education and outreach campaign, but also the, the, the access to testing, the access to vaccines in these places where people uh, normally congregate or where they access additional services. Uh, and that's one way we've been able to meet people beyond uh, the flyering, beyond the email and mess messages, beyond the messages that come from the broader uh, networks. Years ago, it was my privilege to lead a delegation of black preachers to the Holy Land and, and prime among them was Lawrence Aker. And so I know firsthand by observing and participating of your deep faith. And so now that uh, you have impressed me by your willingness and engagement in, in learning, because there's so much misinformation out there. And so I've seen you participate in the sessions with Dr. Fauci, um, Dr. Messonnier, uh, Dr. Friedan. And so you, you've immersed yourself in the knowledge and the science what has that meant to you and your, your congregation as you engage uh, to people, many of whom have lost hope? Yeah, I, I think a lot of the challenges that we had earlier in the pandemic was just mistrust, public mistrust, uh, dating back from the Tuskegee experiment, uh, 1932 to 1972, 40 years of just biomedical mistrust in the African-American community. And so to get the information from those not only on the front line, but those who have been the voices uh, deputized by the CDC and, and other authorized users that made a major difference. And so, uh, as uh, 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 Lamoria said, at, with the Black church needing trusted messengers, we had to get the message, the content of the message, the validity of the message, and then we could pass it down to our parishioners. And uh, so that has brought hope. Uh, as you mentioned, how we've been impact, in, impacted, you're talking about food insecurities, you're talking about mental health challenges. And so all of this is just a plethora of the challenges that we've had. And so Choose Healthy Life uh, for our ministry has been a blessing to have this connection, to have this partnership so that we can minister to our congregation and the community. Lamoria, uh, there have been those who said that organizing the black church is tougher than herding cats, and yet uh, you've had 50 churches in five cities. Uh, what are some of the statistics in terms of how many people have been touched thus far because you started in, uh, in January? Sure. So, and forgive me, I'm looking at my notes on another screen. We have we have touched just over 300, um, just under 320,000 people through Choose Healthy Life, be it through Outreach, outreach and education and awareness campaigns. We have tested just under 9,000 people through Choose Healthy Life and vaccinated just over 5,000 people. So we are really just getting started. I would say this work started in earnest in uh, February and we really kicked off our testing and vaccine work in March. Uh, there's certainly a lot more work to do, but we have, we have, we're making an impact in the Black community and we'll continue to do more to the extent that we're able to. Well, I'm delighted that Black Health Matters saw fit to include us in this important day of empowerment. Uh, as the new president was inaugurated, we participated in it in, during that inauguration week by hearing, uh, by presenting a national symposium, if you will, uh, of the top preachers across the country who heard from Dr. Fauci, CDC, the new experts and leaders in the administration. So we've been fully engaged to get the information out there. Uh, the numbers that you that you said, you just cited are very impressive. 300,000 is the size of a small American city. Uh, and so t t those are very, very impressive statistics. But what have you learned about the digital divide that exists in our community, Lamoria? Yeah, the digital divide is a challenge. Uh, one of the one of the early challenges we faced is we're partnering with Quest Diagnostics for uh, Choose Healthy Life, and as part of the registration process, uh, it all happens digitally. It all happens online, and so what we saw at some of our uh, very early events, and what we continue to see at some other events, is that we've had to bake in an extra step on the registration process to support community members in getting through this registration process. It 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 all happens online, and even the way people receive their results is initially was digitally, now people can call a phone number so that they can access their results. But the digital divide is serious. 
Uh, it's real and it is significant. And one of the things that we um, are really looking to do is support closing that divide with, with uh, our community members. One of the things that happens, and, and Reverend DeGraff, you saw this firsthand in an event that you came to, is we've had elders or people that have come without email addresses. And so what we do is create email addresses for them. And there's a sense of pride when they leave that they are now a part of the group that's using email. Uh, and there's actually a, a use for them with this email address because it's how they access their results. And one of the beautiful things is when those people come back to multiple testing events, because we do encourage people to get tested often, uh, they're able to use their, their, uh, their email address, but also they're able to register with more ease. Uh, and so this is just an entry point, I would say, into closing the digital divide, but it's certainly a major step that we're taking among, all, among the, the participants and the patients that come to our testing events, and it's happening across all of our markets. So this isn't something we're only seeing in New York or only seeing in Atlanta, but we're seeing it across all the markets. Our community is challenged with health disparities, uh, digital divide, and a, a, a number of maladies and statistical aberrations, but we keep on keeping on. But the church, uh, Reverend Aker, has been under siege prior to this. Uh, yeah. We have aging uh, community uh, congregations. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a, a, a challenge of faith, and some of our young people statistically have decided that the church is not the way to go. And now yeah. the church comes to stand in the gap once again, after Jim Crow, after crack, after AIDS, uh, the church is uh, uh, standing again. And yet during the pandemic, many of our churches aren't having even in-person services. Uh, what amongst your colleagues, as you talk to other preachers in Brooklyn and in your national network, what, is, what, are, what are your brethren saying, brothers and sisters in the ministry saying about looking forward? Do, do you see the light at the end of the tunnel? Yes, we do. I, I think a lot of my colleagues are cautiously optimistic uh, there is a, a feeling that and some of my colleagues have already started in person services. Some of us are looking at the fall and perhaps moving to a kind of a hybrid model of once a month and then virtual services and then gradually going to twice a month and virtual. So we're just we're just trying to play it safe. Uh, we want to make sure that the church continues to be that vestige of hope. We don't want to just reunite with in person services and and risk some type of outbreak. We are grateful for the vaccination numbers. And now that our young people uh, ages 12 to 15 can be vaccinated, that gives us hope for our youth ministries and summer camps and vacation Bible schools and, and things of that sort. So we do see hope at the end. We do see light at the end of the tunnel, but we're still going to take it slow and uh, be careful. I, you know, The book of Proverbs says that there's a wisdom in, in a number of, of advisors, I'm paraphrasing. And so as we compare notes, as we look about what, what we can do in a positive way, we're going to do that. And so the church is here. Uh, yes, we had challenges and that we have to reimagine ministry because the church will never be the same. What we've known before, the, everything when we come back will be different. And so, but this is still our eternal hope from uh, uh, our migrators that came from the South at the turn of the 20th century, and now in this 21st century to have a church after the pandemic. I, I say basically it's kind of BC and AC before Corona and after Corona. And so this will be a, a challenge, but we will make it through. I think part of the authenticity of both of your leadership is your devotion and love for your families. Um, Lemoria, what, what do you say to your, your kids and uh, when they ask you, kids, they're grown, but when they ask you about uh, what's going on with the virus and what questions, when they have questions. I, I answer them as honestly as I can. Uh, I think one of the things that we know as a family, and, and last March, my mother and grandmother, uh, who, who both have, you know, comorbidities essentially um, were, were infected with COVID, that COVID doesn't discriminate, right? We all can get it. Um, and that we also have to make sure um, that we're not waiting for COVID to happen to us or COVID to, to, to catch COVID or, 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 or get it, but that we're keeping our bodies in the best health possible so that if uh, for some reason, someone is is uh, is positive, is COVID positive. Your body has what it needs to 
fight this disease. Um, it is dangerous, but we also make sure that we're, we're practicing safety, right? We are continuing to social distance. We are continuing to wear our masks and continuing to really take responsibility for the people around us so that we can have the safest, um, you know, live this, have the safest existence possible in these conditions, knowing that, you know, COVID is still very, very present. Uh, and we're still and we're still very vulnerable. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'm lucky to have access to testing, and I do want to share the access that everybody today will have to testing as well. Uh, but it, whenever there's a testing event and it's nearby, I am encouraging not just my children, but their friends and their and my colleagues and friends to also get tested uh, regularly. And so I think that is one key to just knowing your status uh, will help you be a a um, you know a positive community member for everyone else. Uh, so I think that's very important as well. Well, we want uh, all those who've, who've joined us to leave stronger than they came. Could you tell us about the access to the booth and, and other resources? Sure. So if you're able to visit the Choose Healthy Life booth uh, on this platform, Quest Diagnostics through Quest for Health Equity has made available free uh, COVID antibody tests. You go there, uh, you, you, you click on the, the link that says free antibody tests, you follow the steps to check out, and then you enter a promo code that says Black Health Matters. And that'll give you a link that you can take into a Quest Patient Services Center. Uh, and they're all over the they're all over the world, but they're certainly all over our communities. Uh, you can take them to, to a Quest Service Center and you can get a free antibody test. And this will help you know if you have been exposed to COVID. Uh, it doesn't actually test for a current test. However, if you go to our booth and uh, click on, on COVID uh, testing events, you'll get a full schedule of upcoming testing events in New York and New Jersey. And if you would like to have access to testing events in any of the other markets, please feel free to use the chat function in the booth and someone will be able to share that information with you. Uh, what I know today is that on Monday, uh, May 24th, there will be testing between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. at the Abyssinian Baptist Church in Harlem, and anyone that wants to come get tested is welcome to. Reverend Aker, uh, what do you tell your family and what kinds of questions do they have? Well, certainly, we're, we're grateful. Uh, my wife and I have both been vaccinated and our, our two youngest adult children have been vaccinated. And uh, our youngest daughter is 15. And so we are continuing to advise her to, of course, mask up and to, to be careful, wash your hands, uh, you know, remain six feet in your distance, all of the precautionary uh, methods that we've all been given. But right now we are just waiting for the storm to pass, but we're being proactive while we're waiting. And uh, I'm encouraged, as I encourage my family, I encourage the congregation and uh, this is just a time that we're waiting and doing our due diligence so that we will be prepared to, I, I think it's, it's difficult to say return to normal, but uh, we will have uh, some type of normalcy as we continue to take these precautions. And once again, the, the partnership has been a blessing to us. I think one of the key takeaways for me has been in the aftermath of the Tuskegee experiment uh, in 1994 when they had a symposium at the University of Virginia. Uh, they entitled it uh, Doing Bad in the Name of Good. And that was the overview of that experiment. But I think with this uh, connection and the unity, the cooperation with uh, Choose Healthy Life, we're able to do good in the name of God. And that's what our church is all about. And so we're, we're grateful for this time and for the support. Thank you, Reverend Aker. And, and, and so for those who might not make it to church on Sunday, you just had a, a ray of hope uh, from the Pope. Uh, I just would not, I would be remiss if we didn't take a pause to think about our national co-chair, Reverend Calvin Butts, who stepped away from his uh, responsibilities at the church for a time of private healing. Uh, all of our prayers and thoughts go out to him and his family during this time. Uh, as, as we now move forward together, uh, we, this afternoon, you've heard from these two dynamic leaders, and, and I only scratched the surface of their resumes and, and profiles, but they're doing it in our communities, and it has been said on so many occasions, I'd rather see a sermon than hear one, and both of them have talked about being vaccinated. 
And when they were vaccinated, it was at a time of a lot of misinformation, a lot of fear. Uh, but the antidote to fear is faith. And so I want to thank both of our guests today. And Colin, do we have time for any questions or is this it? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to keep being Baptist. I'm going to keep going until they tell us to shut up. Okay. So uh, fasten, okay. Your, fasten your seatbelt. Um, one of, one of the big concerns uh, in, in the past when we were organizing against many things is we didn't have the resources. And so mm -hmm. having Quest Diagnostics and United Way, uh, we have resources, science, funds, and then we have the professionalism of United Way. Uh, that's an extraordinary partnership. Uh, at the center of it was Deborah Fraser House. We call her the mother of the movement, but she, she comes off of the victory if you will, over AIDS and uh, led clergy across the country to fight uh, AIDS in our community. Because like anything else, in our community, things are different, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the saying goes, uh, Reverend, that uh, a ham and egg sandwich means something different to the chicken than to the pig. Uh, sure. And so the, the, this calamity means something different in our communities. Yeah than it means yes. in other communities. And so yes. we're, we're fighting the fight on, on, on many levels. And, and so as you look down the road to, to uh, the activities of your church, you've, you've, you've kind of given us a blueprint. Uh, what is actually going on in the community around your church? What well, do you in the see? community, in, in the greater good of Brooklyn, we're still doing symposiums such as this right now. There's a lot of information going on. Uh, we're trying to get back to a sense of in-person services and, uh, you know, making sure that our first responders are being recognized and awarded, uh, making sure that our, our barbershops and our beauty shops, that as, as they reopen, making sure that they have enough uh, sanitizer, hand sanitizer. It sounds like small things, but they mean uh, a great deal. And so it, a lot of partnerships are going on right now. <laughs> Uh, Lemoria, uh, there's some exciting things on the agenda for June with Choose Healthy Life. Could you could you give us a peek? Sure. We are on June 12th. Uh, some of our Harlem churches, including which are Canaan uh, Baptist Church and Abyssinian Baptist Church, are coming together to do a testing and vaccination event, I believe, in partnership with Londell's. We also have a Brooklyn Consortium event that's happening with our Brooklyn churches on June 3rd, and forgive me for not knowing the exact location, but that information will be available on United Way of New York City's website. Uh, that effort is being led by the public health, uh, the Black Church Public Health Navigator from uh, Cornerstone Baptist Church. And so she is uh, really leading the charge in Brooklyn. And we are working with uh, partnering with Metro Plus to do a vaccination and testing event in the Bronx on June 6th. And so those are some things that are coming up right away. We also have some of the church-based testing uh, that is happening, like I said, at Abyssinian on, on uh, Monday. But I also wanted to share that in terms of vaccinations, <clears throat> Abyssinian Baptist Church is a, a permanent vaccination site until June. And so you can go there between Tuesday and Saturday, between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. You can walk in. And today at God's Battalion of Prayer in Brooklyn, there are they're providing the Johnson and Johnson vaccine until 5 p.m. Again, you can walk in. So if there are folks uh, that are on the line or have family in Harlem or in Brooklyn or someplace else and they need to take a ride to get access to a vaccine, uh, that is available today and, and next week and through June at Abyssinian. This is such an important moment in, in our history and our development that we're, we're not taking this calamity lying down, that the church has been empowered through this partnership. Uh, the partners have been engaged. They've been meaning, meaningful. because they, they had to make some adjustment, right? They had to demonstrate their cultural intelligence, their uh, community competence. And that's why Lemoria is the success that she has been because she's been on the front line. And, and, and we have not been uh, shy about saying, this is how we do it here. Uh, okay. And and so uh, that's a, a happy partnership that, again, it's a few months old and we're yeah. still fighting this. And the benefit to the community will be the next battle, which is really this is a subset of a larger war. And that that war is on health disparities. 
Uh, and, and the notion of choose healthy life comes from, as you know, Deuteronomy, but the, the notion that, that some of our circumstance we create. Uh, yeah. Some things that we call comfort foods really uh, are discomforting in terms of our overall health, and we need to get educated about what we put into our bodies. And this is a major initiative first step that these churches in these five cities, 50 churches, and it's the first wave with the Marines of the movement. Uh, we anticipate the movement spreading beyond this, but uh, one of the things that comes away is that uh, great warriors uh, have to fight great battles. And, and so these two warriors that you see here today, uh, keep them in your prayers, whisper your support, let them know how much we appreciate all that they do because this is not a nine to five effort. Uh, this is uh, the phone call, the phone can call can come at any hour of the day. And Lemoria talked about the events, but there's a lot going on in between the events. Uh, at the churches, uh, the folks who have been empowered as healthcare navigators are doing social work, bereavement, uh, political awareness, and a variety of other things that can't fit in one title. And so we need to salute and appreciate those who stand up for us every day. And, and Reverend and Lemoria, Madam Vice President, we are grateful for what would you both do each and every day. You're a shining light in our community. Uh, no one has given me the hook yet, so <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to ask. Uh, uh, well, I, I just got a, got, a uh, note in the chat. It said, "Time yeah. is up. Time's up. Yeah, said, Time. Bye, everybody. Thank you for being with us. Thank Continue you to stay prayed up. I'm Thank you, to chat. answer some questions in the chat, but I do encourage you, if there are any more questions, please visit the Choose Healthy Life booth, and we will uh, try to connect with you. Black Lives Matter, Black Health Matters can get in touch with us as individuals and choosehealthylife.org is one word, is a website that you can also go to get information. God bless our panelists and we'll continue to keep you in prayer. We, we fight shoulder to shoulder and it's a privilege to work with you. To our listeners, you've got the rest and viewers, you've got the rest of the day to participate in this marvelous convention. Thank you. Thank you.